Hey, Von Rikus, see Mark here again from Sound Matters. Today, we're looking at a classic album. We are looking at Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak. Now, arguably, this album is very underrated, but also very influential in terms of the direction of where rock music would go over the next 10 to 15 years following its release. This is a great album to get into. I'm looking forward to this one, so let's get straight into it. So this is Thin Lizzy's 1976 breakout album, of course, and we're looking at the VMP Essentials copy of this particular record. The lacquers were cut by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio for this particular release, and it's pressed onto exclusive 180 gram, what they're calling VMP over Master Orange vinyl. There's a listening notes booklet by Stephen Hayden, and of course there's the art print by Jim Fitzpatrick. Jim Fitzpatrick is the original artist behind the cover work of this album, of course, and as I unbox this particular version, you'll notice very cleverly how we've got the shiny foil cover, but then you pull the liner notes out from the front cover and it reveals the full colour print. I don't know if the original 1976 version of this record had this particular effect and the 3D layered element to the album cover, but perhaps somebody can let me know down in the comments below. Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak would prove to be the commercial breakthrough that the band was striving for in the United States, and it's produced some of the most well-known classic rock singles that are still played regularly on the radio today, which include tracks like The Boys Are Back In Town and Jailbreak, of course. Now, the album as a whole, Jailbreak, it was kind of their last-ditch attempt to prove to their label that they could produce a hit album. They were given one more chance by the label, and this one had to break through, and fortunately, it did. The band settled on John Alcock as producer and headed to London's Ramport Studios to record the album. However, in the pursuit of that hit single that they so desperately needed, some of John Alcock's decision-making as a producer would cause significant tension with the band. He hired session musicians on some of the tracks to try and give some of the songs on the album a more commercial, radio-friendly vibe. Namely, on the track Running Back, he hired keyboardist Tim Hinckley, and this did significantly change the whole atmosphere and style of the song from its original, more bluesy arrangements to something that was far more pop orientated. This did not sit well with guitarist Brian Robertson, who very much preferred the more bluesy, original version of the song where he added his own piano and slide guitar parts. This offended him to the point where he does not appear on the final released track. Thin Lizzy's sound and lineup was in a constant state of flux during the early 70s. The role of guitar player in particular had become somewhat of a revolving door. Eventually, lead singer and songwriter Phil Liner expanded the lineup to feature two guitar players, famously saying in a funny anecdote that the reason he added another guitar player to the band was that the next time one of these walks out, there will be another one there. This would prove to be a really pivotal and significant moment in developing the band's sound because it really led to that twin harmonised guitar sound that we all know and love Thin Lizzy 4. And of course, this sound, this dual barrage of guitar harmonies would go on to influence a whole generation of bands and artists from the likes of Iron Maiden, Judas Priest and Metallica to name a few. So the band were perhaps a little bit ahead of their time and when it was originally released it garnered very mixed reviews which is now hard to believe when you consider that the album is regarded as very influential and a classic rock album. But there's no doubt in my mind that through the album Jailbreak, Thin Lizzy had really started to lay down the pathway and foundations for where rock guitar playing would go throughout the 1980s. I think you can particularly hear this, of course, through the album singles, The Boys Are Back In Town and the track Jailbreak itself. But more significantly, arguably, you can really hear where things are going when you listen to the album's epic ending track called Emerald. Without tracks like this, the scene of music and rock music in particular throughout the 1980s could have been very different indeed. 
Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the album. There is a full, more in-depth overview about the album, the story behind it, over at the link in the description below, over at the Sound Matters website, of course, written by one of our great writers, Brandon Stoner. Thank you ever so much, Brandon. I know you're a big fan of this album for delving into this one for us, but I want to hear from you now down in the comments below. What do you think of this album? Do you love this album? What is it about this album that continues to bring you back all these years later? What is it in your eyes that makes Makes it such a classic lasting album I want to hear from you down in the comments below but if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing we can share those musical experiences together as a vinyl community and i look forward to seeing you in that next video keep spinning